Hello everyone. In the first part of chapter 17, we'll be looking at neutralization reactions. She actually um, studied those in the first semester. However, we're going to revisit the concept because we're going to talk about the um, acid or basic solutions that result from these different combinations. So this slide is very useful in trying to understand um, what the pH of a mixture of an acid and a base will be. We say neutralization reactions. Uh, when it, you add an acid to a base, it's not necessarily going to be neutralized if you have weak acids or weak bases involved. So this first um, reaction, we have a strong acid and a strong base. So when they are equal to each other, that is the number of moles of HCl equals the number of moles of NaOH, the reaction will complete 100% and the pH of the solution will be neutral. Um, so keep in mind um, the mole to mole ratio is one in the balanced equation, um, but you would have to add equal molar amounts for that to be true, okay? So later on we'll talk about um, titrations where we have different amounts of HCl and NaOH, but for now if the reaction is complete, you have equal molar amounts of each neutral. Um, for the second example, we have a strong acid and a weak base. And then on the right-hand side, we have the ammonium cation and the chloride anion. Because HCl is so much stronger than NH3, this will run to completion. And so this should be 100% on the right-hand side uh, when you're done with a reaction. So unlike the first reaction, however, you have products that actually have properties of acid. So NH4 plus has acidic properties. So this would not be neutral when it reaches completion. It will actually be slightly acidic uh, because of NH4 plus. So again, we are assuming that we have equal molar amounts of each, and this would be the reaction to 100% completion. Now, if we have mixtures of weak acids and weak bases, we need to consider which is stronger than the other. So we have if HF is reacted with um, the acetate ion, well, the acetate ion is going to act as a weak base. However, HF is a stronger acid then the acetate is the weak base. It's easier to look at the acids to each other. So let's compare the acids to each other. We have HF versus acetic acid. And so this is really just a competition. So acetic acid is weaker than HF. So in terms of the battle between back and forth, HF will win and it's going to be a product favored. So it's close to 100%. Um, but not completely because we do have to keep in mind that the acetic acid does have um, some strength, so it can go the other direction. All right, so the opposite case, we have HCN and NH3. And on the other side, we have NH4 plus and CN minus. So we can compare the Ka of HCN and NH4 plus, and we'll find that they're very close to one another. Um, so this equilibrium is going to be um, near midway at the end of the reaction. Okay, so for the last two examples here in our acid-base reactions, we have acids and bases where we consider what's stronger on either side of the equation. For the first two reactions, the first one is a neutralization reaction. And the second one does not reach neutrality, but it can reach completion, okay? So acid and base reactions, you have to consider what are the reactants? Are they strong? Are they weak? And then what are the products? So this table's uh, very useful in a summary to describe the pH once equilibrium is achieved, okay? So strong acid and a strong base, you're going to reach 100% uh, at equilibrium, and because the products don't have acid-base properties, this is going to be neutral. With the strong acid and a weak base, um, we reach equilibrium at 100% essentially ionized, and that's going to be an acidic pH because one of the products is an acid. 
when we have a strong base and a weak acid, that will reach completion um, because the strong base is going to outweigh the weak acid. And at equilibrium, we actually have a pH greater than seven because one of our products, ClO minus, would be a base, okay? So it have basic properties because it's the conjugate of a weak acid. Now, when you have a weak acid and a weak base, um, like the two other examples we had in the previous slide, the pH would depend on the relative values of Ka and Kb because we don't know what side is going to have a higher concentration, the left or the right. So um, that will summarize the acid-base reactions for the beginning of this chapter. Um, there's some more slides that get into more detail about the mathematical description of why these are the different pH values, but we're not going to get into that much detail.